We're joined now by Christina Austin and Megan Pollock on the DEI Commission here at ASWE. Ladies, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank Glad you. to be here. Thank you for having us. How has diversity, equity, and inclusion really changed the landscape of higher education? Christina, we'll start with you. Thank you. So DEI has really had a profound impact on the fabric of a lot of our campuses in higher ed. Um, it's really made a, rich, a very rich learning environment where we're able to really value the different lived experiences of diverse individuals and understanding their different ways of knowing. And we're really allowed to bring that into how we see engineering, how we see social problems and socialized ways of addressing those problems uh, without teaching people how to address different solutions from a DEI focus we wouldn't be having these very innovative ways of addressing these issues that we have across the world. When we create environments where people feel valued, included, affirmed, they are able to show up as their authentic selves. They experience the kinds of environment that reduces the cognitive overload that they're having to sort of pretend to be something else, right? We talked about this of needing to feel like they are having to assimilate. And, and really that's what our commission is focused on. That's lovely. That leads in nicely to my next question. You know, what strategies are universities implementing to really promote and make sure that diversity and inclusion is a priority. The most effective tools are creating systemic changes that help teachers, that help the institutions, that help people really address the underlying ideologies that have that led to exclusion, that have led to the marginalization. How are those ideologies institutionalized in the system that reinforce those systems of oppression? And then how do they affect students? How are those things internalized? And then what are we going to do about it? Yeah, and from my perspective, really thinking about the students who are there and making sure that they're able to consist. And like Megan said, that system approach is really important. But what's even more important is making sure that we're not looking at that from a deficit lens. So what are really the needs of the faculty to support them? So what assets do the students already have to keep them there? What are their strengths? What are their what are their goals? How can we support each other? Right. So really having that strength based approach to maintaining the needs of the students within those spaces. Let's look at the faculty. How are you mentoring those students? Do you actually know where your students are coming from? Why did they join your program? Is it just so that they could say that they were an environmental engineer? Or do they have a particular uh, background within their environment or their community that they're trying to overcome? When we help people learn how to do this, first, you know, we teach them about systems. We teach them about positionality, which means understanding who you are in that system. How does your lived experience influence your lived experience, how are you, your lens, how you're interpreting your students' experiences, because that affects how you see them as a deficit yeah. or, or what they're bringing or as an asset. asset. You guys can attach on this a little bit. From, from an educator perspective, how do they make sure that their methods are promoting diversity and inclusion? Think about DEI, right? You might just think about that when you're in academia or when you're writing papers, or let's do that for them, right? Think about who you invite into your home. Think about who your best friends are. Is it truly a monoculture that you're living within? When you're truly having diverse experiences yourself and you're truly trying to have an understanding of diverse cultures, then you're truly going to be educating other, other people or willing to understand other people's lived experiences and learn and educate through those lived experiences. For example, some of the core values I believe around diversity, equity, and inclusion are like transparency. How are we making sure that we're not, you know, creating unintentional gatekeeping by, by hiding knowledge? Um, how are we checking in and, and understanding the way that people experience the space? The way you do that is ask them, like, yeah. ask them, how do you feel? If you don't feel good, like, let's talk about that. What about the environment is, is causing that? It's recognizing, like, how do we need to move through the world in a way that creates space an opportunity for everyone. And that might mean for me as a white person that I need to step aside and sometimes. be uncomfortable. Yeah. And that small uncomfortability is allowing for others to become comfortable within that space because you, you don't know that you asking that one question is allowing someone else not to be uncomfortable uh, because they're sitting there trying to conform to this normative of what they believe they have to be in order to be within your space. We're getting rid of that idea of what who you have to be in order to succeed by allowing them to share their voice. All of this work is a practice. It's a constant series of self-awareness and, and like thinking and asking and questioning who's being served, who's not being served by whatever kinds of things that we're doing and participating in. 
Exactly. Some really, really good points. Very eloquently put. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. All right. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks.